Hey, people of faith, Pastor Daniel here for our Sunday sermon on Easter Sunday, March the 31st, 2024. Our sunrise sermon came from John 20, verses 1 through 10. Our traditional Easter sermon, traditional Easter service sermon, uh, comes from John 20, verses 11 through 18. These two we will build on next week and the week after as we cover all of John chapter 20 during these three first three Sundays of Easter. Easter is a season uh, within the church calendar, uh, the liturgical calendar, uh, not just a day. And today we cover two of these, and then next week we'll cover uh, verses 19 to 23, and the week after, uh, verses 24 through 31. So the sermon series is, is about seeing, and it's see the morning one, uh, the sunrise service, see the evidence is there. This one is see the truth is there. Who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So let's hear how Jesus is the truth and how we can see the truth here in John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we give you thanks so much for your word. Your word who is Jesus the Christ. Your word who is the Holy Spirit who is in our midst. We give you thanks so much, Lord, for your word that is the sharing of the faith. In your word, that is the Holy Scriptures that we have read before us. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we speak now and as we listen now, that it may all come from your word. For you, O oh Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. And we pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen and amen. Well, we are now at Easter Sunday. Lent season is over, and if uh, if you're new or you, you came along and you didn't even know about Lent season, uh, I have to say you missed out because Lent season is an awesome season of preparation. It is a season of repentance. It starts on Ash Wednesday some 46 days ago. Ash Wednesday this year was actually on Valentine's Day. You may recall I was telling you, don't take your Valentine out on a fancy dinner, but take her to church and remind her that she is dust and the dust she shall return. That's what every woman wants for Valentine's Day. Not at all. <laughs> but Ash Wednesday just happened to fall on Valentine's Day this year. I actually had a youth, uh, one of our youth asked me last week, why does Easter change from year to year? And it's because it's around Passover. Passover is what we celebrate as Good Friday. And Easter was two days after. Jesus was crucified on Passover. And that changes based upon the, a different calendar than what we follow. We follow the Greco-Roman calendar. The Jews, our Jewish aunts and uncles, have their own calendar. And so it's based upon the moon, not the sun. So therefore, uh, the, the, Easter, the Easter kind of falls in different places every year because of that. 
So I encourage you here on Easter Sunday, now that you can, for me, drink coffee every day of the week, praise the Lord. Y'all, this has really been a hard Lent. I'm not joking. It's been hard for me not to drink coffee. My wife gave up sodas. It was pretty hard for her to give up, uh, to, to give up sodas. My girls are drinking chocolate milk. We're praising the Lord. We are so happy that we made it. But let me say this. The seasons of repentance, Advent leading up to Christmas, Lent leading up to Easter, these are not times for us to live little seasons in life of repentance and then go back to life as normal. You shouldn't tomorrow overindulge in coffee, having 10 cups of coffee to make up for all the coffee that you've missed. No! They are to help change our lives to be more like Jesus. In fact, seasons of repentance should happen constantly. You should pick up another 40 days. What are you going to give up tomorrow for Jesus to be more like Jesus? Do you have Jesus on your mind every single day instead of just Easter or instead of just Lenten season? Because he's got you on his mind and he rose so that we could have him on our mind. Let's look at Mary for an example here. In our scripture, Mary goes through some different stages as she's talking about Jesus. So first, in the first part of John 20, she goes up before it's light, while it's still dark, she goes up to prepare his body for burial. Now, she didn't know that in John 19, we find Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus had already prepared his body for burial. She apparently didn't know that. But she wanted to do that. She wanted to say her goodbyes. And when she's going up, she notices the stone's gone. So she just goes to Simon Peter and Andrew. And this is what she says. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. She starts off calling Jesus the Lord. And then the next time she speaks about him, he says, my Lord. They have taken my Lord away. And then the third time, She says, him. She's talking to different people every single time. The third time, she just assumes that the person talking to her knows that she's talking about Jesus. Mary has got one thing absolutely on her mind. On Easter Sunday morning, this is what's on Mary's mind. Jesus. What's on your mind? Are you excited to get your children dressed up, looking all cute, to take your Easter photo in front of a a cross with flowers on it or just in front of the church or just to take a family photo? Are you excited to have your family together? Is that what you're excited about on Easter Sunday? Or are you excited about Jesus? Is Jesus the reason you rise up and said, I want to go worship him today? Are you coming to church to see the people? I'm happy. I want you to notice me. I love being noticed. But are we focusing on Jesus? Because that's all Mary had on her mind. Mary had Jesus so much on her mind that after Peter and John had already left to go back to their houses, Mary is there left at the tomb and she's crying and two angels are there. She leans into the tomb and looks and she sees two angels. Everywhere else in scripture, angels show up, the person is terrified. Angels show up, the person is falling on their knees. Lord, save me. The angels have to say to the people, do not be afraid. But that's not the case here. Mary has nothing to fear because her greatest fear has come to realization. The one who freed her from all of her past life, and she had a rough life in the past. The one who gave her a new way of living, the one who said you can live repentance not just in a season of 40 days, but you can live repentance every day of your life. You can be better than what you have been, Mary, and I am showing you how to be better. The one who did that, Jesus has been crucified and died. The one she loved the most. Her greatest fear has become a reality. These two angels, she doesn't even blink when she sees them. They say, who are you looking for? Why are you crying? And she says, they have taken away my Lord. She only has Jesus on her mind. When revival happens, it will happen amongst people who just desire Jesus, just want Jesus. There's a thing going on in the, in the digital world and our culture right now of, of this 
phrase, Christ is King. And it's a hotly debated thing. And there are Christians who are debating it saying, we should be able to say Christ is King. And I'm here for it. But I want to go a step further and I want to emphasize the name of Jesus. It is the name of Jesus that Peter used in Acts to cast out demon. It is the name of Jesus that is used over and over again to baptize people. It is in the name of Jesus that is used in Acts to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth, to bring salvation. I would say if you want to say Christ, sure, that's just the Greek word for anointed one. And it's just English, the anointed ones are the kings. So yeah, you're right. Christ is the Greek word for king, fellow Christians. But use the name Jesus. Because it is the name Jesus that means Yahweh saves. God saves us. Jesus matters. And on Easter Sunday, that is all Mary Magdalene had on her mind. And I hope that we can follow her. And that can be the only thing on our mind is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Mary Magdalene, then, after she tells the two angels, they've taken away my Lord, she turns around. And it could be that she is bent down into the tomb a little, and she's looking into the tomb, and so her eyesight has adjusted and so it's dark. And then she turns, and, and if you've been inside and you go outside, you know it's kind of light and it's hard to see. She turns and sees Jesus. She doesn't know that it's Jesus. She thinks it's a gardener. And so it could be that she just can't really see really well. She's got tears in her eyes. Her vision's all blurry. But even then, when Jesus speaks, she still doesn't understand that it's him. He himself says, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She still doesn't understand that it's him. She says to him, and, and notice how much she's got Jesus on her mind. She's got Jesus on her mind so much that when this person that she assumes is the gardener, whom she is not talking to at all, she says, if you have taken him somewhere, let me know where you've put him and I will take him myself. She just thinks this gardener has removed Jesus from the tomb, even though the linens are there. She just assumes that she's he's been removed. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus prepared Jesus' body for burial, and it says that they brought a hundred pounds. That's a lot of myrrh. A hundred pounds of myrrh that they've used to prepare the body and wrapped it in linen. It's been over 24 hours here. We're looking at going on third three days. On the third day, he rose again, and this third day, those that myrrh would have stuck that linen to the skin. And yet here the linen is. No skin got stuck to it. The head wrapping folded and placed down as a symbol saying, Jesus says, I will come back. It is not until Mary hears Jesus call her by name. We find this in John 10. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. And I call my own by name and they hear my voice. When Jesus calls her by name, suddenly she realizes, wow, this is really Jesus. And she comes to believe. She immediately says, Rabunai, which John emphasizes and translates, which means teacher, but really, and I love this, a better translation would be, my great one. Man, how about that for a title for Jesus? You are my great one. I absolutely love that. My great one. But catch this, because verse 17, if you don't know it, I want you to try to memorize it. John chapter 20, verse 17, Jesus says this, don't hold on to me. Don't cling to me. I want you to go and tell my brothers. That is huge. I'm, I want to tell you why this is huge, but I want to continue on. I want you to go and tell my brothers that I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Jesus here is saying that his God is our God, that his father is our father. Jesus is here for the first time in John's gospel calling the disciples his brothers. He says we're family now. All along the way, he's called them servants. Even the night before he was betrayed, he tells them, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. And now that he has risen from the dead, he says, not only are you my friends, but you who believe and follow me, you who live lives differently because you live for me, you are my family. 
my heavenly father, the king, the, the creator of all the universe, he is your father because you live for me. Then Mary does this. Mary went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And if you saw the first sermon, the sunrise sermon, you know that the first time that John got to the, the tomb, he bent down and looked in. And that look, that's, a, that's the word blip. He just caught a little blip of what was in the tomb. Peter comes in. He rushes right into the tomb and he theorized. It says he saw, that's the word from Greek that we get the word theorized. He saw the evidence. The evidence was there. The linens were there. The, the folded the folded linen wrappings from the head was there. And, and he was thinking, but he couldn't quite get it. And then John comes in after Peter, and he sees and believes. And that word for see there is horao. It's where we get the word horoscope. You see everything. You see the whole picture. And seeing the whole picture, oh, John realized, this is what Jesus meant by I will die and raise from the dead three days later. Oh, this is what he meant. He really did rise from the dead. He really is alive. This horao is the same word Mary uses here when she says, I have seen the Lord. I see it all now. He did rise from the dead. And he, came, he told me, little old Mary Magdalene, to come and tell you, his brothers, the disciples, the ones, the twelve whom he called, he is alive and he is going to ascend to our father. He called his own father our father too. He says we're family now. I want to finish up the sermon encouraging you guys to live for Jesus, but not just on a blind faith. A lot of people in our society today, they think that Christianity is is gone. We live in a post-Christendom world, meaning that the majority of our society aren't Christians anymore. I think that's a good thing. Because that means that we should think more about what we believe and change how we live even more so. But our society, they think we're not woke. They think we didn't go through the Enlightenment era. They think we're not reasonable people. Listen, I've got a confession, and I think I've confessed this before, church family. I am a pastor, but I don't have the gift of faith. I don't have the gift of just believe it because I tell you to believe it. No, I had to come to faith through wrestling with what I really believe. Do I actually believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. The evidence is there. The truth is there. See, Jesus is there. Believe. And let's live our lives differently because we believe. There is an ancient historian highly critical of Christianity. His name was Celsus, and Celsus criticized Christianity on this fact. He said, it makes no sense for you to believe a woman who says Jesus is risen from the grave. I don't know if you guys know this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all have different accounts of the gospel of Jesus, of the life of Jesus, even the resurrection of Jesus, but they all share this in common, that Jesus told Mary to be the first proclaimer, the first preacher of the gospel. And Celsus, the historian, said, you can't believe Christianity because a woman was the first person to say that Jesus rose from the dead. Why else would it be ha happen? Why else would we say and believe it if it were not really what happened? Why else would we say Jesus rose from the dead if it wasn't in fact true that he did rise from the dead and he chose Mary out of everyone to be the first person to say, I have seen the Lord. He is alive. He is risen from the dead. He has changed my life and I will forever live differently because of him. May we all say the same thing. May we all say, I believe in Jesus. I believe he is the truth. And I will forever this day, not just for a season of Lent, not just for a season of life, but for the rest of my life, I will live differently. Because he lives, I will live. Because he calls me brother, family, I will be his family. And because I live, I live with him in my heart. May this world see and know him so that the entire world may say, Jesus Christ 
is Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Mm-hmm.